I spent several weeks trying to figure out the best way to make painterly clouds in Blender in the anime style. Some ways were too fluffy, while others were way too crisp, but in the end, I found a simple way to make these painterly clouds in Blender, and I'm gonna show you how. But first, welcome to the Comfy Mug channel. My name is Christian, and I spend countless hours learning how to make anime stuff in Blender so that you don't have to. So, if you want to learn how to make these things in a fraction of the time it would take you on your own, make sure to subscribe with notifications enabled so you don't miss out. And if you want to save some time, you can also grab a set of 30 pre-made clouds with a wide range of custom settings and flexibility on my Gumroad and Patreon for just $25. So if you want to save hours of work making clouds yourself, check out the link in the description. But with that all out of the way, let's get into the video. Now, when I first started, my plan was to make a flat plane with a texture of a cloud that had 3D normals that could react to light and shadows. And that kind of worked, but it took a lot of effort to just make a a single cloud, and I realized that only having flat clouds would really limit my ability to set up several unique scenes. So I scrapped that idea and began learning how to make fully volumetric clouds, thinking I could just shade it to look painted. But that just didn't work at all. <laughs> so then I moved on to mesh modeling and made a really nice, simple shader for this cloud, but the edges were too solid, and I couldn't find a way to make them fluffy without breaking the whole mesh. At this point, I was starting to think I needed to go back to the flat clouds. But then I remembered my friend Tawan Sunflower has a really cool video on adding fluffy painted detail to your objects in Blender. Go subscribe to him by the way, his art is so good and he is such a legend. So I went back and watched his video again and thought to myself, there's no way it's that easy, it's that easy. <laughs> so, after adding the geometry node setup and creating a custom painterly shader, I had finally found a way to make fully 3D anime clouds in Blender. And here's how it all works. Starting in a new project, we'll want to delete everything in the viewport, and I'll change the units to Imperial. We'll also want to go to our render settings and enable Bloom, and down in our Color Management tab, change the View Transform to Standard for more accurate colors in our viewport. After that, head on over to System Preferences and enable Node Wrangler if you haven't already. It just makes navigating the Shader Editor and Geometry node groups a whole lot easier. Then we'll save System Preferences and drop back down to the viewport. Now in here, we'll want to add a meta ball and adjust the ball's radius to 10 feet or approximately 3.048 meters if you're using the metric system. We'll then jump into edit mode with tab and start duplicating our meta ball with shift D to make the general shape of a cloud and resizing the individual balls with S. When doing this, it's really helpful to have a reference image of a cloud, but just having a general knowledge of what clouds look like can work as well. Every cloud is unique, and they can all have pretty dynamic shapes, so feel free to experiment with the shape until you find something you like. And now that I'm done shaping my cloud, I'll tab out of edit mode, and with the cloud selected, we'll press Ctrl A and choose the Visual Geometry to Mesh option. And if we tab back into edit mode, we'll see that we now have a mesh of our cloud. Going into our modifier tab, we'll want to search for a subsurface division and a decimate modifier. We'll then turn down the ratio on our decimate until just before the mesh starts to become jagged. This is just to get rid of the minute vertices in our mesh that don't really affect the overall shape of the cloud so that our computer can run a bit faster. Now, switching to rendered mode, we'll want to add a sun with its strength set to 3 and a camera. Change the angle of the sun to get some nice shadows on your cloud, and press Ctrl Alt 0 on your number pad to snap the camera to view. You can always move around the viewport to find a better angle for your camera if you'd like, or just press Ctrl 0 to snap the view to camera. We'll also add a plane, and in our shader editor, add a new material and call it Painted Cloud, and leave that for now. Because before we do anything with this shader, it's always good to have a nice background to look at. So switching the shader editor from Object to World Shading, we'll then press Shift A and search for a texture coordinate node, separate XYZ, math node, and a color ramp. Connect the nodes as you see on screen, and change the math node to subtract, and the bottom value to negative 0.2. We'll also want to change the colors of our color ramp to a light blue on bottom and a deep blue on the top. 
and cranked the deep blues value to just about halfway on the color ramp. If you want to use the exact colors I'm using, I'll have the hex codes for them in the description below. Now, changing this back to object shading, we could just switch the principled BSDF out for a diffuse and add a mapping and texture coordinate node for some soft gradient shading. You could even go beyond that and add a couple more nodes to get this kind of tune sketched look. But what this tutorial is really about is that fluffy cloud look with soft and painterly shading effects. So getting into that, we'll switch our shader editor to the geometry node panel. After we add a new node group, we'll want to add a grid, distribute points on faces, and an instance to points node. Connect points to points and mesh to instance, making sure that the X and Y are both set to 5 on the grid, and the density is set anywhere between 4 and 8. Now, this has added a bunch of square planes in place of our cloud mesh, but they're all facing up right now, and we'll want to have them facing the camera so that we can actually see the clouds. So, if we add an object info node with the camera selected as the object, a position node, vector math, set to subtract, and an align Euler to vector with Z selected, we can connect the nodes with the rotation output plugged into the rotation input of our instance on points node, causing the planes to follow the direction of the camera at all times. We'll also want to store the normal information of our planes so that we can add that information to our cloud's shader. To do this, all we'll need is a self object, object info, vector rotate set to Euler, a store named attribute, and a set material node. Connect the self object to the object info node and the rotation output to the rotation input of our vector rotate. We'll also want to take the normal of our distribute points and connect it to the vector of the rotate node. Now, we're just going to change the store attribute from float to vector and point to instance, type normal in the name, and place it right in between these two nodes, making sure to connect the vector output of our vector rotate node to the value input of our stored attribute. Oh, and one more thing, we want to choose our painterly cloud shader in the material section of our set material node. And with that, we will have finished our geometry node setup. Now, getting into my favorite part of the process. With our plane selected, we'll open up the shader editor and get rid of the principal BSDF, changing it out for a diffuse. Next, we'll add an attribute node, change the type to instancer, type normal in the name area, and connect the vector to the normal of our diffuse. This is transferring the normals from our geometry node group to our shader. We'll also need a mix shader and transparent BSDF, connecting them in the way you see on screen. Then, in our options tab on the side, just press N on your keyboard and it'll pop up. And we'll select alpha blend for our blending mode and alpha clip for the shadow mode. Now, we're getting some transparency on our cloud texture, but without an alpha map to guide that transparency, our cloud will just look like a pixelated image. So, to shape the edges of our cloud texture, we'll want to add a gradient texture, Voronoi, three color ramps, and a mix color node set to linear light with its factor at one. We'll then change the gradient to spherical, the Voronoi to smooth F1, and select each texture individually and press Ctrl T to add the mapping and texture coordinate nodes, making sure to change the vector input for both to object. We'll also want to add an object info node and connect the location output to the corresponding input of the mapping node for our Voronoi, allowing for the texture to change based on the location of our cloud. We'll then set the scale of our Voronoi to 4 and connect the rest of the nodes in the way you see on screen. Adding just a couple more nodes, we'll search for a light path and a math node set to multiply, connecting the linear light's color ramp to the top value of the math node and the is camera ray from our light path to the bottom value. Once that's done, we can connect the math node to the factor of our mix shader and see what we've made. Our cloud is looking much fluffier now, but if you want to change the look a little, all you'll need to do is shift the values of our three color ramps until you get a look you like. There is no right or wrong way of doing this. You can play around with how soft or harsh you want the edges of your cloud to be and adjust the scale of the Voronoi to increase or decrease the amount of detail and stippling. 
You can also add a displacement modifier to give your clouds some more shadow depth and edit the mesh at any time to change the shape of the clouds. And once you find a look you like most, your clouds will be ready for whatever you have in store for them. But now that you know how to make painterly clouds in Blender, you should check out some more videos like this one on making a painted cell shader with just a couple nodes. Remember to like the video and subscribe with notifications. And check out my Patreon if you want to get monthly anime and stylized assets for as low as $2 a month. I want to say thank you so much to all of my patrons for supporting me and making it possible for me to make these tutorials on YouTube. I am so humbled by how generous you guys are. Your support truly helps a lot and means so much to me. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you here next time at the Comfy Mug.